How's everybody doing this morning? To God be the glory. Look over with somebody and just tell them good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Amen. Amen. A lot of rain outside. God is still good. God is still good. Nobody can let it down poor like that but God. Amen. It's supposed to be tapering off here shortly. Uh, but we thank God for the rain because it is much needed. Much needed. Much needed. Amen. Let us all stand. Let us all stand for a call to worship. Maybe we'll have four, uh, a few more to trickle in uh, with this uh, weather like it is. Amen. We Baptists, we ought to be used to water. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for yet this wonderful day, Father God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. So, Master, we come together one more time to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Father God, make your presence known in this place, Father God. Come in just for a little while, God, and change us, transform us, renew us, refresh us. Rejuvenate us as only you can do. Restore us, Father God. We thank you right now for who you are in our lives, Father God. So we welcome you. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. And all of God's children said amen. Amen and amen. Now hold over with somebody across the aisle and just tell them good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Come on, choir. Bless us with a selection this morning. To God be the glory.
Amen. Amen. Every praise is to our God. Amen. How y'all doing this morning? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to call out our prayer list as we continue in this particular service, worship celebration. Uh, I understand uh, that they just took Brother Tommy G to back to the hospital. Uh, amen. Thank you, Deacon Glenn, for letting me know uh, wherever you are. Just saying, you know, there he is. Amen. Thank you. Uh, just talked to him coming down the road. Amen. Uh, he said he might have to go back. So uh, just that quick. Want to lift up Sister Barbara Chappelle, Mama Julia D. Hart, Mama Alma Glenn, our mother of the church, Brother Robert Ashley, Mama Mary Byers, Mama Mary Mason, Sister Rosetta Aiken, Brother Robert Smith, Sister Linda Davis, Sister Hazel Smith, Sister Annie Porter, Sister Vanessa Glenn, amen. She is present still on in the rain. Come on, give her a hand. God bless you. God Sister Doc Porter, Brother Clayton Gregory, Brother John Barr, Sister Michelle Means Lot, Brother James Stokes, uh, Baby Marvin Jr. I got an update. We can go ahead and take him off after talking to his dad. So we can take Brother Baby Marvin, Baby Marvin Jr. off. Amen. Sister Arlene Peterson, Brother uh, Harlan Lyles. Uh, Brother Steve Camp, uh, Jameer Foster, and I believe we can take uh, that particular individual off as well. Amen. Jameer Foster, amen. Somebody give God some praise. Uh, Sister Teresa Stevens, uh, Brother Burley Dawkins, amen. Been talking to him, and he's turning the corner, so he hopes to be back with us soon. Uh, Pastor Daniel Chisholm, uh, Need to get an update on him. Um, Deacon Dimitri Carter, Brother Larry Dawkins, Brother Terry Spears, amen. Uh, Sister Lucille Birch, we'll take her off, amen. And Sister Nae McKissick, Sister Evelyn Jeter, amen. To God be the glory, she's back with us. Thank God. To God be the glory, Sister. Uh, Eloise Rogers, amen. And she seems to be getting along pretty good. So we'll leave on one more week and then we'll see about taking her off. Sister Mary Hampton and Sister LaShonda Hardy. LaShonda Hardy. From a bereave, uh, bereavement standpoint, it's the Rogers family. The Rogers family. So we want to keep them in prayer. Understand the home going is this coming Monday. This coming Monday, the Rogers family. I want to pray for our issues. Uh, as always, our school system, the war, health care, workers, and staffing shortages. Situation that will shake our very spiritual foundation, stop the senseless killings, and yet they can continue, but that doesn't prohibit us from praying for that particular issue. Amen. Those sick with COVID, flu, and other pestilences in the land. Amen. So we want to, uh, we're going to call Minister Glenn around, if she will, to go ahead and lift uh, these up in prayer. And we also want to pray for uh, Deacon and Reverend Browning uh, as they travel to Atlanta. That she'll be able to spend a few weeks, a couple of weeks, I believe she told me, with her new grandbaby. Amen. So she's going down there and play nanny for a little while. So. Uh, amen. And then we just uh, pray for Deacon uh, Browning to have safe travel back. He's going down to drop her off and then travel back. So we pray for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. Minister Glenn. Let us pray. 
children of God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning on this rainy day. Father God, rain day is much needed, and we just want to thank you for it. Father God, only rain that you can, can send to us. And Father God, we thank you for it. And Father God, we come to you this morning thanking you for waking us up and starting us on our way. And Father God, we want to thank you for that also. Father God, and just because it's raining outside, Father God does not mean that we do not still have S O N inside of us. Father God, we thank you, dear God, for this week and all that we've gone through. Father God, and we just want to thank you. Because Father God, there are some people that still did not make it through this week. And we just want to have mercy on them. Father God, we want to go uh, with the prayer list this morning and bless Tommy G, Father God, because that's how the fast things can change. One minute, Father God, we're a picture of health, and Father God, the next minute we can be a picture of death. And Father God, we just want to recognize the people on our our sick and shut in list. Yes. And Father God, just ask you, Father, you will have mercy on every one of them. Yes. And Father God, answer to the needs that they have. Yes. Father God, and then we want to bless the Humphreys family yes. who are in bereavement this morning. Yes. Father God, and, and we ask if you will just give them strength. Yes. Father God, where they need it. Father God, we ask if you will, just uh, let them know that you are still in control. Yes, yes. And then, Father God, we want to just pray for this senseless killing, Father God, that just continues to go on. Yes. And Father God, we know that there is nothing that we can do about it. But Father God, we just continue to pray and pray and pray, Father God, that it can one day will stop. And now, Father God, we ask him if you will just bless the angel of this house. Father God, as he continues to, to pray for this house and continues to bring, bring the word of God, Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, Father God. And, and, and Father God, we want you to protect him as he travels from North Carolina. Sunday after Sunday, Father God, we grant him, we ask him for, ask him for highway grace and highway mercy for him, Father God. And now, Father God, we ask him, if you will, just bless this, con this awaiting congregation. Father God, as they wait to hear the word of God. And Father God, we don't want to wor worry your patience. But Father God, where there's a need in this congregation, yes, Father God, we ask him if you were granted in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father God, we ask him if you'll bless each and every one of our ministers, yes, our associate ministers. We ask him if you'll bless Minister Brown as she's with her grandson this morning. Yes. Father God, and we're asking if you'll bless, bless Minister Brown, as he is on, on his way back, yes. blessing him in a mighty way. Yes. And now, Father God, we ask him if you will, just bless the United States of America. Yes. Father God, as we have so much going on, Father God, that only you can control it. Yes. Father God, you are still in control. Yes. And we just want to acknowledge that this morning. Yes. And Father God, before I close my prayer, I just want to let you know that we love you, yes. Father God, and we can't do without you. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray on this morning. Yes. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. We say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. God 
be the glory. Amen. Got batteries acting up this morning, evidently to get in the end of life, but we're gonna be all right. Amen. We're gonna call Sister Jamie around. Sister Jamie around to go ahead and to give us our announcements this morning. So, uh, amen. Did you mail? Did you mail? <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, I know what you're doing. It's all right. We get it. November the 27th, 2022. Continue to pray for those on our prayer list, families going through bereavement, and each other. Also, I'm going to give you something to smile about, okay? You ready? Happy Advent season. Today starts Advent season. So this is a time for us to smile and remember the birth of Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> to help celebrate or some things that you could do, they will be having, well, Jonesville will be having a Christmas Day parade this Saturday, December the 3rd at 3 p.m., and there will be refreshments served afterwards, and children get to take a picture with Santa Claus. Also, at Christian Fellowship Baptist Church, they will be doing a night in Bethlehem. This is an all-new seated show, and they have performances each night. So they have one Sunday night, December the 4th at 6 p.m., Wednesday night, December the 7th at 7 p.m., and Sunday, December the 11th at 6 p.m. Those performances will last 45 minutes. And after the performance, you can join the cast for a bonfire and refreshments. Do we have any guests at this time? If not, I hope each and every one of you have a blessed day in the Lord. And remember to smile because it's Advent season. Hope you all have a great day. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Let us govern ourselves accordingly uh, with the announcements. To God be the glory, to God be the glory. Uh, just a couple of pastoral reminders, and we'll move right along. Amen. And that is, uh, I want to take time to thank the ushers. I failed to do it on last week, but I want to take time to thank the ushers and the choir, those that went. Uh, the James Chapel, uh, the second Sunday. Thank you so very much um, as we help them to celebrate their ushers annual and for our ushers that stood at the doorpost, amen. Come on, give them a hand clap of praise. Come on, give them a hand clap of praise. Thank you so very much, thank you so very much. This is the beginning of Advent season. This is the beginning of Advent season and it will run till Christmas Eve. And will run till Christmas Eve. So we thank God. We thank God for this particular season. Hopefully everybody knows what this season represents when we say Advent. Uh, it is the coming of Christ. Advent, coming of Christ. So we thank God for uh, that. Uh, speaking about baby Marvin Jr. And here he is in the congregation. Amen. Go ahead and talk about Marvin. Bob Singh. Amen. There's Junior. <laughs> God be the glory. God be the glory. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. We'll keep praying for him. Amen. We'll keep praying for him. Uh, to God be the glory. I uh, want to do one more thing here uh, before we move forward, and that is uh, because of uh, her absence and my. Uh, failed to remember, we presented uh, appreciation gifts to our associate ministers uh, on the third Sunday, I believe it was, the third Sunday. So we want to take this opportunity to digress right now and to present Minister Glenn, who wasn't here, and then she had a bout with sickness, but she's here now. She was here last Sunday, and the old noggin didn't remember. 
Amen. But here, uh, Minister Glenn, we want to present you with these gifts. Amen. From the church. One on the bottom is from the church, and this one is from your pastor. Amen. So to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. We thank God for you. Thank God for you. So I had to write it down so I wouldn't forget it this Sunday. <laughs> Hey, God is good. God is good. Amen. Come on, choir, and give us another selection, and then we're going to come back uh, with the word of God this morning. Come back with the word of God this morning. To God be the glory. Happy 
I know there's a lot of individuals that have lost loved ones during Christmas time, and it is a time where they reflect back, and it may seem like their Christmas is not as merry as others. But because of who God is, let me tell you, he still has you in his hands. He still has you in his hands. Amen. So we thank God for his awesome power. His awesome uh, omnipresence. His omnipresence, which you mean he's present everywhere. So let's just sing this together a little bit and then we'll bring the word of God. Oh, come, all oh, ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, ye, oh, come, ye to. Through 
The Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Is that what your Bible says? Oh, you may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. I want to speak to you just for a little bit. Uh, as God gives us strength, amen, during this time. And I want to talk about God's comfort. God's comfort. Amen. God's comfort. Let us pray. All wise, kind, heavenly fathers, again, that you've allowed me to stand behind the sacred desk. And I am ever so grateful. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy. I even thank you for the sound of babies in the church, Father God. Thank you, God, because the church that does not have babies, Father God, is a dying church. But Lord, we welcome you in this house. Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. And all of God's children said amen. Amen, amen. God's comfort, God's comfort. When we visit the book of Lamentations now, I want you to know it is a cry out for help. It's a cry out for help due to being in pain, due to being in sorrow, being in a state of despair now, which actually causes one to cry out in a loud voice of prayer. Amen. When you look at the Hebrew meaning of lamentation, it simply means how. In other words, how did we get to this point in our life? How did we get here? And many a times we wonder in our own lives how we end up in situations that we do. Not only does it mean how, but it means a last. A-L-A-S, a last. And you, many a times we are excited in despair when we say alas, amen, we are startled and we're stunned by the chain of events that take place. And the fact of the matter is that many times today we cry out from situations of despair that would have utterly, that we have utterly dug our way into. Amen. Despair, despair, despair. Here in this book, written by the prophet Jeremiah, who is known as the weeping prophet, it is due to the fact now that God now has allowed the enemy, which are the Babylonians, to take his chosen people of Judah, uh, or Jerusalem, you might say, Judah, Jerusalem, same neighborhood, southern kingdom, amen, Jerusalem being the capital. But he's allowed the enemy to take the chosen people, which are the Israelites, into captivity. Amen. In addition to uh, them being led into captivity uh, by the enemy, the Babylonians, they also destroyed the temple of God at Jerusalem. Ah, that's a, something when you destroy God's temple. That's something when you destroy a place of worship. Can I get a witness in here? And yeah, the tragic scene now that we hear in our uh, minds right now, the tragic scene <laughs> presents God's people so corrupt that God has forsaken his sanctuary and abandoned it to his enemies. My God, it, you know, they must have had to be doing something awful bad for God to abandon his sanctuary, for God to allow his temple to be burned into ruins. Can I get a witness? One may ask now, why did all this occur? Why did God allow something like this? Why would God take his chosen people who he chose long ago from the very beginning through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Why would God allow them, those generations that came down uh, through, amen, up to this present point, why would he allow them to be taken in captivity? Why would he allow the temple, amen, that sits up on a hill to be burned to ruin? 
Why would God allow that? One may ask that question. Well, the answer is simply, the answer is simply disobedience. Amen. Disobedience of God's chosen people. Can I help somebody this morning? Amen. Disobedience will take you further than you want to go and keep you longer than you want to stay. Can I get a witness in here? That's what disobedience will do. Notice now what's happening in this book of Lamentations. When you look at it, amen, when you look at chapter 1, flip your Bible back. If you, hopefully you got it open. But when you look at chapter 1, chapter 1 and verse 1, we see now the affliction of Jerusalem. For the writer says, which is Jeremiah, he says, How lonely sits the city that was full of people. How like a window is she who was great among the nations. The princess among the provinces has become a slave. So now what uh, Jeremiah is saying now is that God has allowed the holy city of Jerusalem, amen, that was once full of people, that was once full of people, amen. She is now uh, once was great, but guess what her character is now? She's a slave. Hmm? It's right there in the text. Has become a slave. Can I get a witness in here? Not only is there affliction in Jerusalem, but when you go to chapter 2, and if you read all of chapter 1, excuse me, you'll find out the pain, you'll find out the sorrow, you'll find out the suffering that so easily takes place. And then when you get to chapter 2, the beginning of chapter 2, it talks about God's anger. Yeah, there is a side of God that we don't want to talk about, and that's God's anger. Amen. God is good, but also God has a side that if we don't do right, that his wrath comes about. So look at chapter 2 and verse 1, because it simply tells us that. He says, how the Lord has covered the daughter of Zion, talking about Jerusalem, with a cloud in his what? Anger. He cast down from heaven to the earth the beauty of Israel, talking about the temple being torn down, and did not remember his footstool in the day of his anger. My God, we say the Lord sits high and he looks low and the earth is his footstool. Amen. That's what we say, right? But here we see God's anger of Jerusalem. Let me come and get you now. Let me come and get you. Even in God's allowed affliction, even in God's anger, you ought to look over at somebody and tell them he still loves me. Amen. Look at somebody else because that person didn't hear you. Amen. They thinking about what they did wrong. But look at somebody and tell them he still loves me. In my affliction, in God's anger, he still loves me. Look at somebody else and tell them, he still gives me another chance. Amen. That is, as long as we got breath in our bodies, he still gives us another chance. Amen. Because I come to tell somebody that he is still our father and we are not our own. We did not create ourselves. God created us. Can I get a witness in here? And if God created us, he is the one that takes care of us. Amen. Where's Brother Lord when you need him all the way down from wherever he came? I see your brother battle out there, but I come to tell you this morning that God is a good God. Can I get a witness? God is all that we need. And when you can't rely on nobody else, you can always rely on Almighty God. When I get to chapter 3 now, go to chapter 3, verse 1 with me, because if you look at these particular chapters, you'll see the progression, you'll see the pinnacle, and then you'll see the, descend, uh, the descending of the text as to what happened to God's people. And when you look at chapter 3 and verse 1, it tells us, I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. 
My God. Amen. All of us can point to ourselves when we don't obey God. That we are that man. Can I get a witness? Amen. When we don't obey God, when we don't do what God tells us to do in his word, when we don't rely on him, put all of our trust in him, amen, then we can say the same thing as the prophet said, I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his anger. Because God will use his anger to get us where he, we need to be. God will use his anger to discipline us, to chastise us, to chasten us. God will use his anger to get us to be where we need to be. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. That means that all of us are going to leave here. All of us are going to die. But the question is, what state are we going to be in when we leave here? Are we going to be in right relationship with God? Or are we going to be in right relationship with ourselves? Can I get a witness? But I thought I ought to put this in there for free. Somebody ought to praise God because you're still here. Can I get a witness? Why? Because by, by the time you get to verse 22, God has already told us that there is hope. There is comfort. You ought to look up with somebody and say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. We got to be like Job sometimes. Job went through so much, but Job never cursed God. Amen. Job went through so much, but he never gave up on God. Do I have anybody in here this morning that won't give up on God no matter what you go through? Do I have anybody in here this morning that know that even though you've been sick in your body, even though people have been talking about you, even though they've been conniving and scheming, amen, God still has a hedge of protection all around you. You ought to just throw your hand up, throw your head back and tell God thank you. Can I get a witness in here? Somebody ought to praise God because when I get to verse 22 in chapter 3, the Bible tells me now that through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Can I get a witness? Because his compassion fail not. What are you saying, Pastor Mason? Well, let me help you out. Let me help you what Jeremiah is saying. He's saying through the Lord's mercy wasn't nobody but God's mercy that kept me. Wasn't nobody but God's mercy that kept me from going down. Wasn't nobody that God's mercy that picked me up when others tried to press me down. Wasn't nobody but God's mercy. What is God's mercy? God's mercy is his goodness. Anybody know he's been good? God's mercy is his kindness. God is not like us. God is always kind. God's faithfulness, that's God's mercy. Can I get a witness in here? And through God's mercy, we are not taken out of here. Amen. Some of us, even myself, ought to be taken out of here sometimes with the thing that we do. Amen. When we go this place and shouldn't go. When we talk this way and we shouldn't talk. When we gather together and do this thing that we shouldn't do. But God, on the other hand, through his mercy. Is there anybody in here understand that God had mercy on every last one of us this morning? Amen. You ought to give God some praise that you're still here. Because if it had not been for his mercy, none of us would be here right now. None of us would be breathing right now. None of us would have a heartbeat right now. But because of who he is, amen, God's mercy, through his mercy, we are not consumed. Which means that we are not burned up. God is like a consuming fire. And even time God wants to take us out, he can. But because of his mercy, because of his goodness, because of his kindness, because of his faithfulness, the psalmist says it like this, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Aren't 
you glad you got a deliverer on your side? Aren't you glad that even when you fall and make a mistake, that God still gives you another chance? Aren't you glad that when we mess up, God gives a way to straighten it up? Somebody ought to just thank God this morning for who he is. I'm glad of who he is because I understand that I couldn't make it on my own. Amen. I can't make it myself. But the God that I serve, he's able. I tell you, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask, all that we can think, according to the power that working down on the inside of us. The psalmist goes on, excuse me, Jeremiah goes on to say, because his compassion fell not. God cares more about us many a time than we care for ourselves. Can I get a witness? God is there when nobody else is there, Minister Trent. God is right around us as a hedge of protection, a strong tower, and a refuge. God will wrap his arms around you when the enemy got a gun in your face. Can I get a witness? God is a hedge and all that we need. Anybody know who God is in here? Mm, because of his compassion. He fell not. But not only that, I want to let you know how many times God gives us mercy. You ought to look at your neighbor one time before I tell you and say, I can count that far. Just tell him I can count that far. Amen. Because the Bible says in verse 23, said they are new. What's new? His mercy. They are new. How often? Every morning. And as Steve Harvey would say, every morning. Yeah, they are new every morning. Amen. And then he says, great is your faithfulness. I'm so glad that God woke me up this morning. I don't know what to do. Amen. I'm hyena happy and peacock proud that God gave me another chance. Is there anybody in here glad that God gave you another chance? Is there anybody in here that know even in your mess, God still made a way out of no way? God still opened doors that no man can close. God still closed doors that no man can open. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? And here we are at the beginning of Advent season. And at the Advent season, amen, I anticipate the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But I don't have to wait till Christmas Eve. I don't have to wait till Christmas morning. Amen. In fact, I don't have to wait till in the morning. Because the Bible says that his mercy is new every morning. Amen. Not the same mercy that I had on yesterday. Not the same mercy that I had last week. Not the same mercy that I had a month ago. But this is new mercy. You ought to give somebody a fist bump and tell them, enjoy your new mercy. Amen. Enjoy your new mercy. Look around at somebody behind you before they slap you in the back of your head and tell them, enjoy your new mercy. Because God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Even in the midst of death, God is good. Even in the midst of bereavement, God is good. Even in the midst of confusion, God is good. Can I talk to somebody in here that went through hell and high water just this week? Can I talk to somebody that's got death in your family? Can I talk to somebody, amen, that's been through a lot of stuff this week? All you got to do is rely on God's comfort. What is God's comfort? God's comfort is mercy. Can I get a witness? And then he's got that kissing cousin called grace. Grace and mercy kept me. Can I get a witness? That's why the son is of the ice of says amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but Is there anybody in here happy for God's grace? 
comforts. Is there anybody in here happy for God's comfort? If you know you got God's comfort, praying you in his arms, you ought to say yeah. yeah. Tell him yeah. yeah. Tell him yeah. Ain't yeah. he all right? I said, ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? He's all right. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Great is your faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness because his mercy that he gives me is new every morning. Look over somebody for the next to the last time and just tell them I don't operate on no stale stuff. Amen. Amen. Tell them my mercy not stale. Amen. God give me new mercy. Every morning. Every morning. That's why I spend time with him. So I can get my new mercy. Amen. That's why I obey him. Or I can get my new mercy. Amen. God is good. God is good. I tell you, God's good. And that's God's comfort. God's comfort even when we even don't deserve it. God still comforts us. God keeps us. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Amen. Great, Lord, is your faithfulness. If we were as faithful or an inkling of faithfulness as God is, we wouldn't have nothing to worry about. Amen. We talk about faith. We talk about faithfulness. But then we have to ask ourselves, where is our faith? Substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I may not see it, but I believe God can do it. Amen. I may not see it, but I believe he can do it. And the comfort that he gives me all throughout my life. Amen. I shall never turn back on that. Yes. Shall never turn back on God's comfort. Mm -hmm. God's comfort. And I want to say to the Rogers family, amen, in the midst of your bereavement, in the midst of your bereavement, amen, that God's comfort will that be. That place is the office, baby. Office. Yes. The office. Humphreys. 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 With an H. With an H. Humphreys. It's time for faith. Okay. We get it right. Humphreys faith. I want to say in the midst still of your bereavement. Amen. Amen. We pray for you for strength and comfort. Amen. So the Humphreys family. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. And God keep you. Maybe there's someone under the sound of my voice. Maybe there's someone under the sound of my voice. Amen. That you need God's comfort. And the first thing we have to realize about God's comfort in him giving us new mercy each and every day. New mercy every morning. Every morning. Every morning. Not the same stuff I had yesterday. But new mercy every morning. You have to realize that if you're not in right relationship with God, now is a mighty good time to get there. Now is a mighty good time to get there. Tomorrow is not promised. Huh? It's not promised, amen, because he's coming back like a thief in the night. The Bible tells us that. And we also understand that the enemy is uh, running around seeking whom he may be devour, like a roaring lion. So things happen in our lives that we don't anticipate happening, amen. But while we got a chance, while we got a chance and while we got blood in our bodies, that's the time to make a decision to accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Talking to somebody, offering up the invitation this morning. If you're in here and you do not know it from the free parts of your sin, amen. If you don't know it from the free parts of your sin, I would like to introduce you to Jesus this morning. The man who died for us. He died for us. Amen. But went down in a borrowed tomb and on the third day he got up with all power in his mighty hand. And he said, all we have to do is confess with our mouth, believe with our heart the Lord Jesus, and that God raised him from the dead, and thou shalt be saved.
So is there one? Is there one seeking salvation this morning? Need salvation, that relationship with God? Or need restoration? Either one, salvation or restoration. If you're in here this morning, right where you are, can you stand? Can you stand? Can you stand? Amen. If you don't have right relationship with God, if you don't know him from the free part of your sin, because you got to understand, he didn't give you that new mercy for no reason. Hmm? He gave us new mercy and he gives us new mercy because he gives us another chance. He gives us another chance. So if you're in here this morning, amen. If not, maybe there's someone that just need God's comfort going through some stuff, amen. Going through issues in life, amen. That's about to take you out of here, amen or causing havoc in your body, if you'll just stand, if you'll just stand right where you are, just stand right where you are. Amen, amen, amen. Just stand right where you are. Bless her, bless her, bless her, bless her. God is gonna fix that situation. He is gonna fix that situation. Bless her. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Let's go to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come to you this morning in the humblest manner that we know how. Father God, asking that you prick, first of all, our hearts, that our hearts would not be so hard that we would not come to you, God, that we would realize that you give us new mercy every morning, that we realize that it's all about you and not about us. We thank you for all that you've done thus far, God. We thank you for all that you're doing right now. And we thank you for all that you're going to do, God. So, Master, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your son. Father God, these that have stood this morning, Father God, for whatever reason, God, you already know. I don't have to know. But you look down the corridors of our lives, Father God. You look on the very uh, insides of us, Father God, our heart, our mind. And you know all about us, Father God. You know what we're thinking. You know what we're planning, God. You know everything about us, Father God. So we say in the name of Jesus, bless us right now, God. Created us a clean heart and renew a right spirit, God. Somebody, Father God, needs you as a doctor right now. So doc, uh, Dr. Jesus, please be a healer in their life. Somebody needs you as a way maker, Father God. Please make a way out of no way. Somebody needs you as a provider right now. Because they don't have all they want, Father God. But you supply all the needs, God. And their life is 99.9% of it, God. So we thank you right now, God. We thank you for your healing power, God. We thank you for seeing those that were on the sick list, that come off the sick list. We thank you for seeing their presence in the sanctuary, God. Father God, we praise your holy and your righteous name. Now, God, I pray for somebody out there in virtual space, Father God. Somebody looking at this video, Father God, that if they're in a state of condition, Father God, somebody's about to go out of their mind right now. But I pray in the name of Jesus that you would give them peace right now, Father God. Calm their situation because we understand God's comfort in our lives. Amen. Because you, your compassions fail not. Amen. You care more about us than we care about ourselves. Amen. Because you are God. So we just say thank you. We just say thank you. We just say thank you. And Lord, we just give you all our glory and praise during this Advent season leading up to Christmas. Father God, and we'll be so very careful, so very careful to call on your holy and righteous name each day, Father God. Each and every hour of the day, we'll be like Paul told the church at Thessalonica. Sometimes we find ourselves praying without ceasing. So we say we love you. We love you. For well, it is in the precious and powerful name of Jesus, I do pray. And all of God's children said, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. But the Lord is so good to see you, man. So good to see you. I just happened to peek over there doing the message and see you sitting there. Amen. We're all masked up and everything. It's hard to tell who's who. 
Well, it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Cradle, cradle, look in the love. Cradle, look in the love. Amen. And we just pray. We just pray for that situation. Continue. I do it every day. More than once today. And God is going to move. God is going to move. Amen. Amen. All hearts and minds are ready or on one accord. Let us stand. Let us stand. So good to see you. So good to see you. So good to see you. Some faces I hadn't seen in a while. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. We'll have to, the sun has come out some, so trustees will be out taking up our tithes and offering. God loves a cheerful giver. And by the way, we did not bless the offering. We did not bless uh, the tithes and offering. Amen. So I apologize. Uh, for that. In fact, what we're going to do, we're going to ask Minister Thompson, if he will, to come and just bless our military, bless our military, bless our tithes and offerings. And while you're up here, just go ahead and give a benediction. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Let us pray. Beloved Master, we thank you once more for just you coming through, Father. Blessing us with new mercies, Father, not only this day, but every day. That's right. Thank you did not have to, but you did. Thank you. Continuously keep comforting these families, keep comforting everyone all throughout this world, Father. Yeah. It can be so hard, Father, but you let us know that you are here. That's yeah. right. And all we got to do is turn to you, Master. That's right. Heavenly Father, you bless us with this time. Let us give back to you what simply you yeah. gave to us in time, yeah. Father. Not worrying, but just giving it to you, Father. Yeah. Indeed. And just as well, Father, I pray for the military, Father. Mm -hmm. yeah. May God them, let them know that you're with them Father, and guide them on their way, Father. Yes. Back to their families or wherever you will have them to be, Father. Yeah. Yeah. Please protect their families, comfort their hearts. Let them yeah. know that you're with them, Father. And if you're with them, they're all right, Master. Yeah. And all these things, I just say thank you for always being here. Continuously guide everybody as they may leave this place, that they may be changed, Father. Not the yeah. same that they came in, but changed in you. Yeah. Let us be in your comfort now and forevermore. It is in your precious Son, Jesus' name I do say. Amen. 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 You are dismissed.